All right, we're gonna be looking at how electrical engineers design the electrical systems for buildings using Revit. We're gonna talk about every single thing that there is to talk about from an electrical engineering perspective and Revit and make sure that we're using Revit the way that it was intended to be used by electrical engineers because Revit is amazing program. It's, it's literally amazing. It does so many things for us, but there is a pretty big learning curve. And if you're working with it wrong, it's going to be really frustrating and you're going to say, I just want to go back to AutoCAD and AutoCAD it doesn't give me these errors and all this stuff. You know, Revit is amazing. You just have to use it right. And the thing that's hard is that Revit doesn't come out of the box ready to be perfect for electrical engineers. So I wish it did, but it doesn't. So what do we have to do? We have to adapt. We have to be engineers. We have to develop some tools that work with Revit and allow us to be more effective as electrical engineers. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. And then the future videos, you know, we're going to say, okay, here's what Revit gives us. Here's how electrical engineers, what we need. Here's how we can develop the things that we need to develop to put them into Revit so that we can do our jobs effectively. So let's get started at the very beginning, which is setting up a new model from the templates that Revit gives us. Okay, so we just clicked Revit and it opened and it brought us to this screen. So now what do we do? All right, we've got two options to create a new model or open a model or to create a new family or open a family. Typically as electrical engineers, we are creating models. Sometimes we'll customize families and load them into our models, but really we're developing models. That's how we print our construction documents and all that. So let's do a new model. Okay, so what comes up? This little dialog box that says template file and then select. This is like the most important thing that you can set up as an electrical engineer or as an engineering firm to set yourself apart because what what a template file is, is it it's what it creates your new model from, right? So you can either use Revit's defaults, which don't really give you much. They either give you too much or too little for an electrical engineer or you and your firm can create an electrical engineering template so that when you create a new project, you've got everything that you need there, nothing more, nothing less. You've got the right families, you've got customized smart schedules, everything is linked together, your sheets are created, your general notes are there, your keynotes are set up, your demo notes are there, there if you need them, everything's there, right? The, the biggest mistake and issue that I've seen at many engineering firms is they don't have an electrical template set up it's either they just everything they've ever made is in there or they don't have anything at all. And that just is recreating the wheel on every project or you just have so much information that no one knows what to use and nothing really works the way it's supposed to. So having your electric template set up is like the best thing that you can possibly do to get ahead in Revit. And if you don't have one set up, you're behind. That's just the way that it is. So when we're selecting these template files, we only have what Revit is giving us, right? Because we're gonna build up everything that we need for electrical engineers, but we've gotta start with what we are given from Revit when we download and install it, right? So the two options here is Imperial Multidiscipline and Metric Multidiscipline. So depending on where you're at, if you're in the US, we're gonna use Imperial so that we've got you know feet and inches. Um, if we select the Multidiscipline package for our template, it's gonna give us way more than we need. It's gonna give us architectural stuff, it's gonna give us civil, all, all the stuff that we're gonna end up needing to delete. So a better way to get started is to just click on browse. This will take you to where your templates are stored. You can see this is where I've got my custom Betty template. Um, but we're gonna to go to electrical default. So, okay, we'll click that, open, create a new project. All right, so what Revit's doing right now is it's loading everything that is associated with that electrical template file from Revit, which is not much, which is why it happened pretty quickly there. So what's going on here is uh, we've got our three main windows, right? We've got our active window, which shows whatever we're working on. Um, in this case, it is a floor plan. We can tell that by looking at the other main important window, which is our properties window over here. So this is what's giving us all the information and parameters associated with what's over on this screen. Since we don't have anything clicked with our mouse or selected, it's just telling us the properties of what is over here, which is the floor plan. As soon as we click something, it'll tell us what that is. So this is an elevation family. It's in the category of elevations and it doesn't really give us much to click there. So if I click this, 
Now this is a building elevation family, and here's all the properties associated with that. So the main thing I wanna highlight in this video though is the project browser. So this is what you can tell is being brought in from your template, right? So what did the electrical generic Revit template actually give us? It gave us views, legends, schedules, sheets, families, groups, and Revit links. Okay, so this is gonna come in no matter what, but the template is responsible for putting the information in here that we want. So what did it do? It set up some views for us. Okay, so it set up lighting floor plans, which is not what we want. Um, we'll get into that later, but power plans, that's okay. A 3D plan, elevations, fine. You know, this is okay. It gave us some generic views for lighting and power. Uh, legends, it gave us nothing. So we have no legends. So any legends that we need to create in our project, we're gonna have to start from scratch. Schedules, it gave us electrical analytical bus schedule and electrical analytical load schedule. So if I click these, I can see what they are. Um, this is something that I've never used or we would never use. We're gonna have better schedules than whatever these things that are generic are being set up. So I'm just gonna actually delete these because I don't want them in there to confuse me. Um, so no schedules, basically, no, no useful schedules. The other thing is sheets. We have no sheets set up. Um, and any good electrical template, you're going to have all your, your separate sheets. So imagine this, your electrical template that your firm has and your custom firm, it, it provides all your sheets. So E001 is in there, your abbreviations, notes, legends, everything is set up. And all of your other sheets, power plans, they're all set up. They've got their general notes there. They got schedules that are going to be relevant. Everything's set up. What Revit gives us? No, nothing. We have no sheets. Okay, so I don't know why my thing was selecting on those blue lines. I just had to hit escape like 30 times and then it stopped doing that. But okay, so yeah, sheets, it didn't give us anything. Families, it actually does give us some good stuff, right? So electrical equipment, electrical fixtures, lighting devices, lighting fixtures. That's electrical engineers, bread and butter and Revit. That's what we're gonna be using. So Revit has given us some stuff that we may or may not use in here. So lighting and appliance panel boards at different voltages, a duplex receptacle family with a GFCI type, um, and then a plain recessed lighting fixture <laughs> at a couple of different dimensions. Okay, so that's useful. These these other families um, that Revit loads in, I honestly wish we could delete them, like ducts. Typically, as an electrical engineer, we're not gonna be laying out the ducts. So I wish I could delete these, but I can't. They're system families, so you just gotta live with this stuff in here. But that's what I'm saying. Like When you start having too much stuff in here, your project browser just becomes unmanageable. Like you don't want to have to look through all these different lines of stuff and and when you have like you know these uh categories of families which is what an electrical equipment is that's a category of family um getting huge is this stuff just becomes unmanageable so we want to just have what we need nothing more nothing less in here um but unfortunately we can't delete these other things i guess one other thing that's important to point out here is how electrical engineers actually are working when it comes to models typically what happens which we'll see in the next video is electrical engineers will have their own model sometimes mechanical and plumbing may be in it sometimes they'll have their own separate model um sometimes you might all be working in one model if it's a really small project and the architecture firm is in-house uh but most common is that the architecture will have a model the mechanical plumbing will have a model and then the electrical will have a model right and then we just link the models in. So what that does is it allows us to all be working in the same model, which you can do without the links, but it makes it so that the mechanical person can actually just like delete all my lights or as much as they would like to, they can't do that. So um, it just gives some permissions and then allows us to work collaboratively without accidentally screwing up somebody else's stuff. Okay, so in the next video, we'll talk more about how we bring in those rabbit links and how we really start getting this project set up. If you're still watching this video, I hope that that means that you found it helpful. And if you're looking to learn more about electrical engineering design and using Revit in the MEP industry, you can start our three week electrical engineering bootcamp by clicking the link in the description below and you can get started now for free. So here at the Building Engineer Training Institute, we're engineers, we train engineers, we love MEP, 
And if you are interested in this industry or you're working in this industry, we would love to help you. So let us know how we can help.